In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. God's Providence of Creation An amazing message of life about human salvation. The origin of the earth and the universe. Dr. Jarrock Lee's lecture on Genesis will address interesting subjects such as the providence of human creation, the great flood of Noah, the pyramid, the black hole, etc. Dear viewers, we hope that you will come to have love and a reverent fear of God from the center of heart through the message preached by a worldwide revivalist, Dr. Jarrock Lee. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and GCN and Manmin TV viewers, this is 12th lecture on Genesis. Let's review briefly what we have learned so far. In the beginning, God the origin existed in the original space in the form of light that contained sound or voice. At a certain time, God the origin cohered as a light at the vertex of the spiritual realm to begin the human cultivation. At the same time, the original space was divided into four spaces that have different density of spirit and different brightness of the light. This is how the first, second, third and fourth heavens were created. The light that cohered at the vertex of the spiritual realm was divided into three different lights, and each put on a spiritual form that is like that of man. That is, God the origin became God the Father, God the Son, the God the Holy Spirit. The process of God the origin being God the Trinity was the division of the spirit in which original entities came forth from the one original entity. That is, two more original entities were made from the only one original entity. The division of the spirit in which the original entities issued forth from the original entity took place only once and at this time. And it is only God the Trinity that has the ability to separate spirits from its original entity. Therefore, not only God the Father, but also God the Son and God the Holy Spirit can freely divide their spirit as they please. However, it is the division of the spirit that sub-entities come out of the original entity. Through the division of the spirit, God the Trinity has managed so many works throughout the history of human cultivation. Different names are used in the Bible according to the characteristics of the work done or to the roles of God. There are about 30 names that refer to God the Trinity and I spent the last eight lectures to explain the meaning of each of these names. Beginning with this lecture, I will explain the works of the creation after God the origin became God the Trinity. God the Trinity created what is necessary first in the place where He stays. When God existed in the original space as the light that contained the sound, He didn't need a separate place to stay in. You know, because He existed as the light and the sound, and thus He didn't need a place to stay in. However, He now needed a place to stay since He put on a form. God the Trinity, of course, can either put on the form or not when He is in the fourth heaven. He can change His form as freely as He pleases in His heart. 
It's possible because the attribute of the fourth heaven is the same as the original space. However, God the Trinity puts on a form in the third heaven where the heavenly kingdom is located. And there are separate places for God the Trinity to stay in in the third heaven. Of course, there is a place for God the Trinity in the fourth heaven as well. It is the place that is necessary only when God the Trinity puts on a form. When He created this place, God the Trinity created spiritual beings that coexist with Him and that He oversees. There are two kinds of spiritual beings that God oversees. They are angels and cherubim. God created angels and cherubim with His Word. I'm going to explain about these angels and cherubim over the next few lectures. An angel is almost the same in its form as that of man, except that you know, it has wings. But there are various shapes of cherubim. The spiritual beings that have the appearance of form, such as lions, eagles, and cows, are all cherubim. Dragons are generally considered imaginary creatures, but they were originally a kind of cherubim. Well, I'll come back to cherubim later, but for now, I'm going to tell you about angels. Let's take a look at general characteristics of angels. Since the shape of angels is almost the same as that of a man, some parts of the Bible describe angels as men. For example, when the Lord resurrected, the women who went to the tomb saw an angel. For this, Mark 16 verse 5 says that they saw a young man sitting at the right, wearing a white robe. So they saw a young man sitting at the right, wearing a white robe. For this same scene, however, John 20 verse 12 describes it as two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been lying. When the Lord ascended into heaven, two angels appeared to his disciples who were gazing into the sky. But for this, Acts 1 verses 10 and 11 says that two men in white clothing told them that the Lord would come back. From the fact that the people of the Bible who witnessed angels describe them as men, we can see that the angels, I mean the shape of angels is similar to that of men. So with their wings spread, we can see they are angels. But if their wings are folded, we cannot see whether they are men or angels. So when they spread their wings, we can clearly see they are angels. Just as man was created in the image of God, angels were also created in the image of God. Of course, angels were created before man. However, there is a clear difference between men and angels. Angels only resemble the outward image of God, but man was created to resemble even his heart. This I will explain in great detail when we get to the creation of Adam, the first man. Now, since the, I mean, the shape of an angel is similar to that of a man, is the size and height also similar to each other? There are angels that are similar to man, however, there are very tiny angels and huge angels as well. There are also male angels and female angels in a tribute. However, it doesn't mean that angels have you no know, physiological features of a man or a woman. Angels don't need to marry or to breed just as men do. They just follow the orders of God and do their roles. However, according to their roles, they may have the form and characteristics that are you know, masculine or feminine. For example, if there is an angel who plays the role of an army general, which form would be more appropriate, a male form or a female? Of course, it is a male shape. What about dancing and singing? Then a female form might be more suitable. Well, I don't mean that there are no you know, masculine appearing angels that dance. Just as there are male dancers in this world and they play their roles, there are male-like angels as well. 
Dear brothers and sisters, when God created angels and cherubim, He didn't give them the humanity that He gave to man. So, God you know, didn't give the humanity to the angels and cherubim. He created them so that they would only obey orders according to their hierarchy. However, angels can also fill the heart of God whom they are serving. Let me make an example of animals. Man raises animals such as cows, horses, pigs, chickens, and dogs. Among these animals, for example, can chickens fill the heart of their owner? No, they can't. There are exceptions, as with dogs. If dogs stay with their owner over a long period of time, they can feel the heart of their owner a little bit. If an owner gets angry, his dog can feel it, put its tail between legs, and tries to read the owner's face. On the other hand, if the owner rejoices, his dog also wags its tail, and they rejoice together. Likewise, angels can also show various facial expression and I mean, attitudes according to a given mood. If their master sings, in the praises and dances with joy, the angel also follows the master in happiness. If the master laughs at something funny, an angel also laughs following the master. If the master becomes sad, the angel also looks sad and sits down helplessly. According to the status of the master's mind, the look and attitude of the angel also changes. The characteristics of angels also vary according to their given duties. For example, the angels that sing or dance usually laugh with ease. Some angels are playful and they are good at making funny faces. On the other hand, the angels that play the role of a security guard do not laugh. In the same way, there are angels that are given a unique duty in the spiritual realm, but there are other angels that minister the children of God on earth. Hebrews 1 verse 14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits? So all angels are ministering spirits. Sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation. So those who accept Jesus Christ as their Savior and whose names are written in the book of life in heaven. So they are sent to render service. Each one of you are assigned an angel to render service to help you manage a believing life and to protect you from the enemy devil and Satan. So if you live in the Word of God, angels will protect you and you can avoid any disasters or diseases. But they cannot protect you if you don't live by the Word according to the justice. It is the law of God and they cannot protect you according to the justice. Then you got sick and encounter a disaster. So are they not sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? So if you are not saved and of your name is not written in the book of life in heaven, God doesn't send you an angel. You cannot be protected. As recorded, a child of God is assigned at least one angel that ministers that child. If you believe this fact, what should you do? If you doze off during a worship service, you should know how much your angel tries to wake you up. The angel will say like, Master, you shouldn't doze off. It's rude before God. And desperately tries to wake you up. However, the voice of angels is spiritual, so you cannot audibly hear it. So unless you are awake, you cannot hear it. If you are awake, fervently praying and receiving the fullness of the Holy Spirit, you get the feeling, even if you don't care, you know, clearly hear it. I should not doze off. It is rude before God the Father. You will think like this, and you will not fall asleep because you feel so sorry and embarrassed before God. But those who fall asleep constantly fall asleep. Even though they are told to worship God in spirit and truth, they fall asleep. Why don't they hear the voice of angels? Isn't it because they love the world? 
without casting off the untruth? Isn't it because they befriend the world and love the world? It is because you are spiritually asleep, not fleshly. In other words, you have too much untruth in your heart. And you love the world instead of casting off from it. So when you listen to the word during the worship service, you cannot understand it due to your fleshly thoughts. Moreover, if you have idle thoughts, you cannot concentrate but easily fall asleep. In this case, no matter how desperately your angel tries to awaken you, you cannot hear its voice. On the other hand, to the extent you fill your heart with the truth, you can hear the voice of the spirit well. Even if you cannot see your angel with spiritual eyes, you can sense the angel must be feeling like this now. Even if you cannot feel it, since you know it now, please try to do what your angel desires of you. Then, you know, God will love what you do too. If you gossip and speak ill of someone, your angel will stay away from you. Because the Bible tells you not to gossip, don't judge and don't condemn. Those who are good at judging and condemning, they judge and condemn others as if they were able to read the mind of others. I wonder when they can get rid of it and can't you know, come to spirit. Unless they cast it off, they are far from the spirit. They are living a fleshly believing life. Angels hate those who gossip about others. And angels stay away from them since it is against justice. Well, your angel will say first, you shouldn't do this. However, if you don't listen to it, but continue, but continue to do it, the angel will stand in a father from you and eventually turn it back to you. Well, about 10 to 20 meters away and turn it back to you. If your angel ignores you like this, the enemy devil and Satan will never lose this opportunity. Since angels don't protect you, the enemy devil and Satan don't lose that chance. They will incite and instigate you to speak more words of untruth. On the contrary, if you live by the word of God, your angel will also be so much pleased, and he will stay close beside you, keep you, and protect you. So if you are protected by an angel, you are blessed. Uh, depending on how far you come into the Spirit and the whole Spirit, and how strong your faith is, the capability and strength of the angel changes. Stronger angels will protect you. Even if you have an encounter with a dangerous accident or situation, your angel can keep you safe. There are many Mammin members who are not injured at all even though their cars were wrecked in car accidents. Some of them were thrown out of the moving car through its window and fell down to the ground. But they were okay. And they said they felt someone was holding them up and supported them comfortably. If you live in the light by the word of God, you can be protected by angels in any situation. It is an ordinary thing to me because it happens all the time to me. The people and the workers around me experience it so many times. In addition, angels are recording your every word and action in heaven. There are angels that record what you think in your heart and the words you speak. That's why every word you speak on earth will never fall down to the ground and you will be given account for it on the judgment day. If you can remember this, you will not speak carelessly. If you speak carelessly and recklessly, you should know how 
I mean, you should know that you will be judged for what you say. The Bible is absolute. I am so scared. Then you should live an honest life and a sanctified life and cast off evil. If you repent of what you speak, you can be forgiven. But the problem is that you do not remember what you spoke. That's the problem. You don't remember what you spoke. That's why many people cannot destroy the wall of sin even if they have the wall. The Bible says, the word you speak may have the authority to save others or kill others, and you will be judged for that. If you remember what you did, I mean, you can remember what you did, but you cannot easily remember what you spoke, and thus you cannot repent as time goes by. And then the wall of sin remains. So if you speak an evil word, you should repent of it right away. Ah, I spoke a word of untruth and evil. Man, I judged someone or condemned someone. You should realize it right away and repent it. The quickly. The record will be submitted as the evidence of judgment during the Great White Throne Judgment. Well, I'm not saying you, know, you won't be saved because of this. Unless you commit a sin that leads you to death, the Bible explains under what situation and condition you cannot be saved. You know, those who blaspheme against the Holy Spirit and stand against the Holy Spirit and willfully commit sin, put the Lord on the cross again, and lose the first love of God and have a lukewarm faith. The Bible says that you know, they are to be thrown away. If you don't repent of this and don't turn back from it, you will be thrown away. But the word you speak recklessly will be judged. Why? It will be judged at the judgment of rewards, and your rewards will be reduced. In Matthew 18, verse 10, Jesus said, See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that their angels in heaven continually see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Do not despise any little ones. Even the little ones are assigned to by angels. So when you despise them, it will be reported before God. For I say to you that their angels in heaven continually see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Angels give report before God. All will be reported before God. All the angels report to God. If there are 6.7 billions of people, there are 6.7 billions of angels in heaven as well. How can God receive the reports of all the angels? So there is an order too. An angel, I mean angels give report to archangels, and archangels put them in a golden censer according to the order, and all the reports are given to God. God doesn't see each and every angel to receive reports from them all the time. Like 6.7 billions of angels, okay? <laughs> there is an order in the spiritual realm like this, and it operates precisely according to this strict order. So the order of the spiritual world even in the world of evil spirits, is so strict, and the Lord told us about it. Therefore, I urge you to live all the more perfectly in the light by believing that an angel is right beside you. So don't overlook it, all right? Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, God created the whole universe and searches every man on earth. An angel is assigned to each man on earth and records every word and action. These angels are in heaven.
also told you that at least one angel is assigned to each man on earth to minister to them. The number of these angels is so huge. The total number of the angels that God created is uncountable, so countless. And the world of angels is so well organized. In the Bible, there are not only angels, but also heavenly host and archangels. Luke 2 verse 13 says, And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host. Here, the heavenly host is the heavenly army, the army in heaven. Therefore, we can see that there are angels that play the role of soldiers. The first Thessalonians 4 verse 16 also says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. I said, the existence of the archangel proves that there is order in the world of angels. In fact, the world of angels is very well organized like a government organization of a nation in this world, and the order is very strict. The Bible mentions about strong angels, right? The strong angels appear in Revelation as well. There are baby angels too. There are bubble angels and little angels. The world of angels is so interesting. A big angel is too huge to grasp at one sight. Those who have spiritual eyes also have a problem to glance the big angel at one sight. There are strong angels as well and archangels and you know, other angels in other ranks. If God comes down onto this earth, He will be escorted by 12 angels on both His sides, and 24 angels and other archangels will guard them. The government of this country has the Prime Minister, who is the head of the administration, and there are many departments beneath Him. There are Department of Defense, Department of Administration, Department of Culture and others. And the head of each department is called a minister. The minister equivalent in the world of angels is the archangel. Archangels play the role of God the Father's hands, feet, eyes and ears, and they search various fields. They receive direct orders from God the Father and they report to Him. Underneath search in such archangels, there are countless angels. So the Bible, the Bible tells us about angels and archangels, but don't think there are in only such ranks in heaven. There are many various ranks and orders and organizations in heaven. However, an archangel doesn't manage angels beneath it individually. Angels are grouped by numbers, and there are leaders that command at each group level. It's like a system of Roman army because there were you know, kiliarchs, centurions, and captains according to the number of soldiers they command. You know, they commanded 100 soldiers, um, 10 soldiers, 100 soldiers, 50 soldiers or a thousand soldiers, according to their ranks. So it is the same with the army of this country. There are a number of soldiers underneath a general, and some other different number of soldiers under a lieutenant, and captain, and so on. So there are generals with each number of stars, and they are all in a, in a properly ranked. So generals may have a different number of stars. One star general, two star general, three, four, five star general. So they have ranks too among generals. One, two, three, four, five stars. It's somewhat similar to the organization of this church. There is general great parish pastor and underneath there are great grand parish pastor, grand parish pastor, and parish pastors. 
All underneath parish pastors, there are district leaders, sub-district leaders, and cell leaders. Likewise, in the world of angels, with archangel in its center, there are leading angels at different levels. In a strict order, they work according to the orders of their higher ranked angels. So there is no disobedience in the world of angels. They follow the order and obey. And so, when Lucifer rebelled, one third of angels that were under the supervision of Lucifer didn't have other choice but to follow her. There cannot be disobedience. As an archangel gives an order, they have to obey. Those of you who have spiritual eyes open can see that the size and then in the dignity of angels are not the same from each other. That's because angels are in different levels and their given duties are different. The organization of angels that consists of archangels, different levels of leading angels, and angels underneath them are well organized. Once an order is given from the top, it is precisely conveyed, and the reports made at the lower level are well conveyed as well. So even if an order has to go through many steps, it can be conveyed instantly. The organization of this church should be like this. Say, your district leader graduated only from an elementary school. But you are a cell leader and you graduated from a university. If you think it's embarrassing to say amen to his saying and to obey, you are very arrogant. You are spiritually arrogant. But God is pleased when you obey the spiritual order. When you obey, peace can be kept. Don't regard the things of this world, but follow the spiritual order in this church. Since the order is very precise like this, even though there are countless angels, the rule of God can be well practiced. Even though God is sitting on His throne, He can search everyone on earth because angels work like this. Of course, God is Almighty, and He can manage all this by all by Himself. However, angels directly check all things by themselves and report it to God. Like this, angels play not only the role of a reporter, but also the role of the witness to it. This fact adds the light of justice to God's judgment when God judges something. If you are curious about how God can supervise all the 6.7 billion people, well, think of a computer. As written in Revelation, a certain computer system will become the beast. Think of a computer. How many things can a small computer control? During the seven-year Great Tribulation, all the information of the entire population of this earth will be stored in the computer and they will be controlled and governed. The computer system in the headquarter in Brussels will control 6.8 or more people. Now, what is it that God the Almighty cannot do? If you cannot understand it, Think of a computer and what it can do, and then you will understand. Even though God searches even the heart of man, He doesn't judge anything alone. He designs and judges injustice according to the report of angels that see and hear all things directly. For example, how did God work when He judged Sodom and Gomorrah? Genesis 19 verse 1 says, Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening. 
Well, I'll come back to this in a great detail later, but for now, these two angels are actually archangels that are under the direct supervision of God. Before God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, God sent archangels under His direct supervision to check on them again like this. God was about to judge a great city of Sodom and Gomorrah. He was to judge them by fire. He knew all things, but He sent archangels to check once again. God is the God of justice, and He is so precise. Even though He knows all things, He goes through this process again. Genesis 19 verse 1 says, Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening. I come back to this in great detail later, but for now, these two angels are actually archangels that are under the direct supervision of God. Before God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, God sent two archangels that were under the direct supervision of God to check them once again. You should learn this and apply it to this church so that no one will be accused wrongfully. It hasn't happened, and it should not happen either in the future. However, the people of Sodom were very devious, even desiring to harm these two archangels. Finally, God brought the judgment of fire upon Sodom and Gomorrah. Likewise, angels are the workers of God, and they help the government of God be managed in perfect justice. There are many records about various works of angels in the Bible. Here are a few. In Revelation 7, verse 11, there is a scene that all the angels were standing around the throne and worshiping God. When our Jesus was born, a multitude of heavenly hosts praised God. It is written in Luke 2, verses 13 and 14, some good shepherds witnessed it and they found baby Jesus. In Daniel 6, 22, Daniel said in the den of lions, my God sent his angel and shut the lions' mouths and they have not harmed me. The lions were kept hungry. You know, they could eat the people. They could eat the people to the bones. And Daniel was thrown into such a den of lions. But God sent angels to shut the lion's mouth. And the lions couldn't do anything. And how much were the lions surprised? There, in the mouths were shut. So Daniel said, My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths, and they have not harmed me. In Acts chapter 12 is a scene where an angel saved Peter, who was locked in a prison. Even Peter was confined in jail. An angel saved him. The angel was put on a spiritual space, and thus the angel could be seen. When angels are put on a spiritual space, you know, they can be uh, visible. Revelation 8, verses 3 and 4 describes a scene that an angel puts the incense of the prayers of the saints in a golden censer and gives it on the golden altar before the throne of God. As written in Matthew 4, verse 11, as Jesus passed the three temptations of the devil after the 40-day fasting, angels came and began to minister him. How much did angels rejoice? When you encounter trials, you should pass them, at least three of them. Once you pass them all, you will get the answer and you will receive blessing. If you don't pass any of them, you are not a ready vessel to receive the blessing of God. As your spirit and soul prosper and God tries to give you blessing, if you don't pass the tests, you are not a ready vessel, and thus you cannot receive answer. You should be able to pass all three of them. 
Those with faith can overcome them by faith. If they say, I believe, and unless they change their mind, not swaying back and forth, right or to the left, but they keep their faith, they can, you know, they can overcome any kind of tests. They will not stumble. They will not say it's difficult. They just endure it and show their faith. Then, when the time that God has set comes, they pass the three tests and they will receive blessing. The bigger the test, the bigger the blessing. The smaller the test, the less the blessing. A strong angel appears in Revelation 10 verse 1 and Revelation 18 verse 21. In Revelation, from chapter 8 to 11, each time seven angels sound a trumpet during the seven-year Great Tribulation, a serious disaster comes to the earth. And in Revelation chapter 16, there is a scene that the seven angels pour out on the earth the seven bowls of the wrath of God. Do you think they are ordinary angels? Do you think ordinary angels will carry out such great works? Moreover, just as 2 Samuel 24 verse 16 says, when the angel stretched out his hand toward Jerusalem to destroy it, there are angels that execute the judgment of God. Psalm 103 verse 21 says, Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you who serve him, doing his will. As Psalm 68 verse 17 says, the chariots of God are my rides, thousands upon thousands. We can see huge the scale of the heavenly host is. How huge. Not all the chariots of God were there. But still, they are thousands upon thousands. How huge they were. Try to calculate it. Thousands upon thousands. Thousands by thousands. <laughs> In emergency, God sends the heavenly host to protect the people of God. God sent such a huge number of angels and heavenly hosts. Who could interfere it? Who could dare stand against? For example, if you read 2 Kings chapter 6, Elisha was surrounded by the army of Aram. At this time, Elisha's servant was seized with fear and worried so much. However, Elisha said to his servant, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And as he prayed to God to open his servant's spiritual eyes, the servant saw horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Since the heavenly host is riding on the horses and chariots of fire, it means that the heavenly host came in a great mass at that time. Eventually, Elisha was not harmed at all. There are many more works than this that angels did. Even the names of some angels are mentioned in the Bible. They are Gabriel and Michael. In fact, they are all archangels. Since their names are written in the Bible, they must be given very important duties. Only a few names of archangels are mentioned in the Bible, and thus people may guess there are only a few archangels, but there are countless archangels, not to mention the number of angels. Therefore, you can see you know, how important these archangels are because their names are mentioned. I will explain the duty of these archangels in the next lecture. And I will cover the roles of other archangels in the next lecture as well. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the air that we breathe all the time is invisible, but it surely exists. Likewise, the spiritual realm is invisible, but it surely exists. Since you have prayed for so long, 
and tried your best to sanctify yourself and cast off every form of evil and to live in the truth. Many of you have spiritual eyes opened. Just as our bodies are in the midst of the air, this physical world is actually a subordinate world to the spiritual realm. The physical world, fleshly world, is an extremely small part of the whole world that God created. Therefore, understanding the spiritual realm becomes power to you. So you should know the spiritual realm. The more you know, the stronger you will become, and you will receive answer since you know the spiritual world. To the extent you understand the spiritual beings of the spiritual realm, the angels, you can understand the Bible well and your believing life can be strengthened. May you make bread from this Genesis lecture to become all the more powerful child of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Let's think over the message and pray together. Hallelujah, Father God. Thank you for your grace and love. Bless us and make the message we heard today become faith and life in us. Father God, bless us to clearly understand the spiritual realm and let us apply it to our lives on this earth. If we can understand it clearly and apply it, it will become great strength for us. We will be able to receive answers. Father God, thank you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah! Almighty Father God of love, please lay your hands on all brothers and sisters receiving this prayer here in attendance. Lay your hands on all the members of the brain churches and local centuries, and all the GCN and Mammin TV viewers, and those who are receiving this prayer via satellites, cables, and the internet all over the world, transcending space and time. Plant faith in their hearts and drive out their negative thoughts and doubts. Let all the trials and afflictions leave them. By the fire of the Holy Spirit, from head to toe, scorch their sick and affected parts, including all cells, tissues and nerves, all internal organs and intestines. Let the light of creation come upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and viruses, and infirmities, go away. Let the light shine on them. Scorch their incurable and long-term diseases by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Burn all kinds of endemic and contagious diseases like malaria. Let all new and unknown diseases, including swine flu, depart from them. Be cleansed and made well. All epidemic diseases, such as colds and fever, go away from them. Protect them from any kinds of germs and viruses and bacteria. Heal them of all kinds of cancers like stomach cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, breast cancer, womb cancer, intestinal cancer, and all other diseases like AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, women's diseases, thyroid diseases, and all inflammations. Let them be made whole from polio, stroke, arthritis, herniated discs, and many others. Let all kinds of pains disappear from them like back pain, headache, and neuralgia. Set them free from epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and all other mental diseases. Loosen them from all kinds of paralysis and let them get up, walk, and jump. Let them regain good eyesight and restore good hearing. Let the blind open their eyes and the deaf come to hear and mute begin to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents. Restore their ruptured and broken bones. Restore them from burns and let the heat and burning sensation go away from them. Father, let there be no scars left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions and poisoning. Father, regenerate dead nerves, tissues and cells and bring the dead back to life. Father, please bless them to conceive a baby. Bless them to conceive a baby. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the air, the evil forces and their servants, go away from them. Go away, you evil spirits, unclean spirits, deceiving spirits, spirits of falsehood, separating spirits and all forces of darkness. Loosen all bonds of wickedness and darkness and go away from them. Let the light shine on them. Father God, give them strength to cry out in their prayer and empower them with the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. 
Let them be in good health as their soul becomes prosperous, and let their family be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters, and bless them to lead a successful and prosperous life in everything. Please protect your children, their home, their business, and their work by the fiery hedge of the Holy Spirit, with the heavenly host and angels, and with your blazing eyes. Give students wisdom and understanding and fill their hearts with more passion and desire for study. Keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and plant into their hearts more fervent love for God. Bless your children and let them give glory to you in everything they do, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do. Let them confess and testify to the living God, I've met God, I've experienced God, and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Let all glory be to you alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. God's providence of creation. An amazing message of life about human salvation. We should fervently spread the evidences of the living God, the Creator. So that many more people can know God, the Creator, and fear Him. When he created this place, God the Trinity created spiritual beings that coexist with him and that he oversees. There are two kinds of spiritual beings that God oversees. They are angels and cherubim. An angel is almost the same in its form as that of a man, except that it has wings. Let's take a look at general characteristics of angels. Hebrews 1.14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits? So all angels are ministering spirits. If you live in the light by the word of God, you can be protected by angels in any situation. 